Then. Julie, we're talking about, if you like, the challenges of being a modern prime minister, uh, running, running a modern democracy. Would you say it's fair to say that it is a difficult time to do that? I think it is fair to say it's a difficult time to do that. I'm conscious that if we were suddenly somehow joined by all the ghosts of Prime Minister's past, uh, they would possibly say, gee, you're complaining, you know, in, in my day. Uh, it was much harder. Uh, but I do think that there are some things that make uh, governing in the modern age much harder than it used to be. Uh, one, I think the uh, way in which new technology has reshaped everything, but particularly uh, reshaped the media and the speed of the media cycle and the way in which the media engages in uh, political debate. So now the premium is on eyeballs on content, so you want the content to be as schlock horror as possible, to get as many eyeballs as possible. I think that has changed the rhythm <coughs> of governing. Uh, so, you know, even when I was uh, Prime Minister and things continue to get faster, but when I was Prime Minister you would put out a very major policy statement at 10 o'clock in the morning and by midday journalists were ringing my press secretary saying, have you got a story for us? And he'd say, well actually we made this major announcement at 10 o'clock, no, 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 uh, tweeted about it, blogged about it, done the interview on TV about it, we need some new content. Um, and so that rhythm is not the rhythm of good government. So I think that's objectively hard. I also think the second thing that's hard is clearly uh, there is now in many communities uh, around the world a loss of faith or backlash uh, in, against globalisation, uh, migration, uh, concerns about identity, concerns about uh, where digital disruption is taking us to and those undercurrents which have been turbocharged by the global financial crisis make it quite a difficult era in which to govern. Mm. I just want to dwell on that, that last point, uh, the sense of people that um, it isn't good for them, that maybe globalisation and technology are driving all kinds of growth uh, globally, but for them, uh, they're not feeling so good, they're not feeling that they're sharing in that. How do you respond to that as a, as a Prime Minister these days, do you think? I think that is exactly the sentiment that we need to address, and uh, I think it's understandable. I mean, I uh, celebrated my uh, birthday a couple of weeks ago, I turned 55. And if you uh, think of someone who's my age, um, you know, a man my age who may have left school quite young, uh, who conceptualised his life as being one as a manufacturing worker, uh, which in the days that he left school would have been a good job, and my state of South Australia uh, was home to many such good jobs, secure good jobs. Uh, and you think how the world has changed for him. Um, you know, manufacturing has been hollowed out, so those jobs aren't available anymore. Uh, skill levels have just risen and risen, and so having left school early, not perhaps having much confidence about his ability to learn, uh, chasing the new opportunities in the labour market is quite hard. Uh, his life has been reshaped by the gender revolution, by the uh, emerging equality between men and women, and his uh, community may well have been reshaped by uh, immigration and diversity, and so a changing texture mm. and feel to it. Uh, you know, this is a lot to cope with, so no wonder people feel, um, you know, left out and left behind. Uh, if I had the formula for fixing that, um, then I would have written the global bestseller, which would have changed everything. Uh, I, I don't. I think aspects of the formula are, of course, uh, you know, social supports and educational opportunities. Um, and I think in Australia we tried to uh, reinforce and buttress those kind of things. But I also think that there is a narrative that will need to speak to identity politics and fears about diversity and change that actually no one um, mm. has uh, yet quite found uh, because, uh, you know, here you've seen those fears feed into Brexit. In the US we've seen those fears give rise to Donald Trump 
uh, in Australia, those fears have uh, led to people who are anti-globalisation and anti-immigration being elected to our Senate. Uh, in Europe, those fears are fueling both uh, the hard left and the hard right. So uh, no one, I think, can say, look, my nation is immune or we've found uh, every part of the dialogue that helps quell these fears. Mm. It, it, I, I think you've, you've put your finger on it. There's an interesting body of work taking shape, uh, academic work and political work, uh, under the rough headline of the, the China shock. They're not saying that, that uh, free trade or globalization or technology are not things to be embraced or good for countries or good for growth, absolutely backing that, but saying that uh, perhaps uh, in some places we've not acknowledged how hard they can impact particular communities and that government then has to uh, try and do, do something about that. Um, do you think, well, I just want to stay on this point for a bit because um, it seems to democratic politicians are trying to lead a democracy have a particularly difficult job at the moment. They have to say to people, much as you described, look, things are changing, not to your advantage, uh, and maybe we have to trim back our budgets as, as well, and that's not going to be to your advantage either. Um, now vote for me. <laughs> and um, I wondered whether you felt we were entering a an age of um, kind of turmoil in politics, of uh, much less sort of political continuity and more mistrust from from voters? Uh, unfortunately, I think both of those things. And I think the uh, complexity of the demands of governing in this time, combined with this turbocharged mm. rhythm of the media, um, they are, um, you know, Re reflecting and uh, refracting against each other in very difficult ways. Uh, so it is not only that we've got big challenges, but it is very difficult to sustain the reform attention necessary over a long period of time to have people become familiar with the challenges, uh, prepared to accept that there needs to be change and then prepared to adopt a particular solution. And part of this media whirring uh, is the um, fragmenting of uh, where people get facts from. And uh, that I think we've seen on display in some big democratic debates, including here in Brexit. Uh, I mean, in, in the old days, um, you know, take something as uh, controversial as the Vietnam War, uh, which was tremendously controversial. In Australia, we had conscription, so tremendously controversial. Um, you know, a father and son could be watching the six o'clock news and getting the footage from what was the first television war, we got the images quite quickly, of Vietnam. Uh, they could watch that footage and come to quite different conclusions. You know, the father saying, this is a justified fight, and the son saying, I don't believe it is and I'm not going uh, if my number comes up for conscription. But at least they were watching the same images uh, coming through to them. Uh, now, uh, you know, people can end up in self-reinforcing bubbles that never get anywhere near the facts. I mean, uh, we've seen this in the US with the startling percentages of people who still believe that President Obama was born in Kenya and he is a Muslim. Um, and I think if you manage to snatch their, um, you know, iPad or phone for long enough and tracked everywhere they would got their news from, probably everywhere they got their news from reinforced that view that President Obama is from was born in Kenya and he is a Muslim. Um, and clearly this was an element here in the Brexit debate where people were constantly having prejudices reinforced back to them. Uh, so in that environment, complex challenges, hard for the facts to get through, easy for falsehoods to grow deep roots and very difficult for the truth to catch up. Um, getting the reform attention that we need uh, is tremendously difficult. Uh, and once again, I don't think anybody's quite found the formula for that.